G'day, Dylan O'Donnell here. A few of you have noticed that I'm suffering from stellar anemia. Stellar meaning stars, A meaning none, and emia meaning presence in blood. And that's because I've been having trouble with my CGX mount. Uh, I've been suffering this wobble in the uh, RA axis, which is basically blurring every single photo I take. But one of you in the comments mentioned that I might be suffering from something called belt stretch, where the belt over the years has become stretchy and that's causing a little too much backlash so that as it's trying to correct its position, it's causing the RA to jump up and down as it compensates for that backlash. So I have new belts. Now I've had these belts for a while, but I've never had the gumption to actually fix it myself because honestly, I don't know what I'm doing. I know I sound authoritative, but really I'm not. So I'm just gonna try it. If it breaks, it breaks, it's broken already anyway. My name is Dylan O'Donnell, you're watching Star Stuff. Exposed. So here's the CGX that's not really working right and the first thing you want to do is take off these little motor shields here so we can get in and see the motor. Now the replacement belts that you need for the CGX are the Gates T5-165-10 belts. These are really hard to find, it's not something you can generally pick up on Amazon. Uh, I got this from Builders Electric Motor Repair, they don't normally send them overseas but the guy was kind enough to do that for me. Um, so I got these sent from the USA, from Martinsburg WV. I don't know where WV is. What state's that? With Wisconsin. Here's what these belts look like. They're made of a very hard plastic, uh, very different from the belts once you've taken them off. Here's one I've just taken off. These are the ones that come with the CGX. They're kind of more rubbery. They do feel sturdy, but I can imagine that these ones stretch more than this hard plastic does. So. We'll try and see. And here's one I prepared earlier. Uh, you can see here I've already swapped that belt out. So there's the old one and there's the new one. And it still seems like there's a bit of backlash but it's, it is actually a lot tighter than it used to be. So for that you obviously want to just loosen the clutch, tighten it back up again, take all your counterweights off obviously. And I've just taken the motor casing off this which is just a couple of screws. I don't need to teach you how to unscrew screws, I'm sure you're well aware of that. Now I did this one earlier, it was pretty simple, so I'm just going to do the same thing again with the deck motor. Alright, now watch me fiddle around like an awkward teenager. This one up the top here just slips out, so I'm just using the screwdriver here like a little lever. There's actually no need to take any of the rest of this casing off at all, but it is a bit tricky to slide it out. There we go. Once it's loose, this other one can just sort of slide through there. So easy. Here's the new belt. Now, this side has a little lip on it, so you want to kind of slide that one through first if you can. And then get this one. What I did here is just sort of get that one into place. Hopefully this works again, but I've got the hand controller here. Up and down is deck, so I'm just going to go turn the, turn the motor here slowly and hope it slips on. There we go. I'm not just a pretty face. 
That one's actually a lot tighter than the uh, RA. Maybe I need to adjust the distance on the RA so that there is no give at all because that is super tight. I like it. Oh god that noise. Have I fixed it? And I'm not going to know until I throw an OTA on here, align and do some guiding and see if the wobble's gone and go back and do the hyper tuning. So if you haven't seen the hyper tuning video, if you have a ZGX, if you're here on this video because you are trying to maintain an aging CGX mount, check out my other hyper tuning video uh, because that is actually really crucial to dialing in the CGX so that it performs optimally. And that has helped me before in the past. <laughs> It didn't work. It, I didn't break anything. The CGX belt upgrade worked insofar as it, it is what it is. It's still doing exactly what it did before. It didn't fix the underlying issue here I'm having with the RA spiking up and spiking down, spiking up and down, up and down this wobble uh, all the time. Deck is fine, deck's quite manageable, but that blue line is just not going away. I've tried hyper tuning. I'm just going to give up now, I think. Well, things are going, I may as well try some short exposure stuff. Before this next bit, here's a quick montage of all the visitors to the observatory lately. Let me have a quick word with you about the trapezium. We hear about the trapezium a lot when we judge photos of Orion, but honestly, I don't see the trapezium in many people's photos. It definitely doesn't show in a lot of the wide field work that I do. It is a very small cluster. Visual astronomers talk about it a lot because <laughs> it's basically the only thing they can see uh, through a telescope. When it was discovered, they recognized three distinct stars. This increased to six or seven, and now we know the cluster has about eight or more. Here are a bunch of images of Orion that I'm seeing in social media this week. And they're all great images, and I love the way they pull out the nebulosity of the great region. But the trapezium is almost always obscured. So this is where the short exposures really come into their own. The image I took with the few seconds of actual clear sky I had during the testing for this CGX video, I only used two second exposures, and I used a hydrogen alpha filter, and that reduces the star bloat and allowed me to really pull out that inner detail. And if you're up for the challenge, you can try and actually label all of the stars not just A, B, C, and D, but A, B, C, D, E, F, G, and H, which I was happily able to do in this image. Maybe next year when I actually get some clear skies, I'll do it properly with color. So if you do have a bit of focal length and you are up for the challenge, try actually resolving the trapezium instead of the greater Orion Nebula. That's it for this video. I do have a new mount on the way, so new videos are in store, plus the mythical Lunt 40 millimeter, which has been delayed for nine months. Hopefully I'll eventually get that and review that too. But in the meantime, I hope your astronomy journey is going well. My name is Dylan O'Donnell. You've been watching Star Stuff. Remember, everything is meaningless and we're all going to die. Yeah.